Hey everybody, we are joined by Packers player, personnel executive, Lee Gissendainer. Lee, welcome. And I gotta tell you, when I was doing some research for this interview, and I saw you were a member of the Big Ten's 100th anniversary team, I gotta tell you, Lee, we're not worthy. The legendary conference, all those legendary players, what an honor. That had to be a thrill. It, it was an honor. Um, you know, growing up in the Midwest and uh, being able to play in the Big Ten, uh, it was definitely an honor, but you also respect the tradition uh, of the history of the Big Ten football. Player, personnel, executive. Mm -hmm. Now we hear different titles, but we don't really know what they mean. What kind of responsibilities go with that? Well, it always goes back to helping Brian, uh, helping Brian manage the roster. Um, it goes back to scouting the pro side uh, when we need to, also um, scouting the college side, um, being prepared for the draft. So there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, there's a lot of day-to-day -day activities that, uh, that need to be done, and we're all willing to step up and, and help out in any way. Lee, 23rd season with the Packers, mm -hmm. sixth as the player personnel executive. Could you talk about the path you took to get to your present position? Yeah, um, it really started, you know, I've always grown up playing football, been around the game, um, eventually uh, played at Northwestern, got a scholarship, and uh, after Northwestern, um, I went back to grad school after a brief uh, pro career and I was kind of deciding on what I wanted to do. Um, I knew I wanted to be involved in sports. I didn't know if it was going to be, you know, small school athletic director. But when I was in grad school, um, John Dorsey reached out to me at, at Kent State when I was working on my master's. And he presented me with an opportunity to come interview um, to be a, a full-time scout. And uh, long story short, uh, John Dorsey convinced me to, to take the position. And uh, I started as a, a national um, combine scout. And uh, from then on, that was when Ron Wolf hired me back in 1998, and it's been a it's been a great experience ever since. Um, but, you know, I was here with the with the Packers 17 years, um, and then I left uh, to go to the Jets for three years as a national scout, and then returned on the pro side in, in 2018, and I've uh, been working on the pro side uh, ever since. Lee, who has been the biggest influence on your career? Do you have somebody? Ooh, the biggest influence on my career. Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's one person. Um, I would just say that, uh, you know, my, my competitive spirit that I've always had as a player, um, I kind of use that um, going into scouting. Um, I respect the game so much, um, love the NFL. So um, there's kind of a, an internal drive that, that I've always used and, and relied on. Why the personnel side of the business as opposed to coaching? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, for me, uh, I did have a brief uh, opportunity to coach when I was uh, at Kent State. Um, loved the experience, loved working with the guys, but I'm, I felt like I was more a behind the scenes type person. Um, I like building the, building the team. Um, I like uh, taking pieces of a puzzle and putting it together. And I, I just felt that kind of fit my, my personality better um, to work behind the scenes and, uh, and uh, and kind of build, build a roster. Lee, do you have an overall philosophy about the personnel business, sort of a, your guiding principles? I would say um, constantly uh, pursuing excellence. Um, there was a saying that I once heard um, it said, excellence is a result of high intention, sincere effort, uh, intelligent direction, and skillful execution. And I've always kept that in my mind but uh, just pursuing excellence and uh, just trying to build the best team you can. You played professionally. You had a legendary career at Northwestern. You played the game at a very high level. How does that affect you in your job presently? I think it helps a great deal. Um, I like to say that I, I grew up on the grass, you know, so I kind of know uh, what, it's, what it's like to be out there when you're tired and still have to perform. Um, going against different levels of competition, you understand what it takes to, to succeed in this, on, this, uh, on this level. Um, there's a, a thing that you can't, uh, you know, we're in this analytics world. Um, I just think that it always goes back to, to football and, uh, and what happens on the field. 
and I rely on those experiences um, every, every single day when I'm evaluating talent. You spent, as you've talked about, you've spent much of your career as a scout in one form or another. Mm -hmm. What did you learn along that way? Um, a, a lot of things, um, you know, and it starts with the people that I've, that I've worked with, um, starting with Ron Wolf, um, the John Dorsey of the world, the Reggie McKenzie, guys who've been gone on to be ge general managers in this league. Um, just taking all those experiences and knowledge from each and every person that you come in contact with. Uh, every day is a new day. Um, you never stop trying to grow in this business, no matter how long you've been in it. Um, there's always stuff to learn. And uh, you learn that it's not a perfect science. You know, we're out here trying to, trying to do the best we can to, to uh, make predictions on players that we bring in. Um, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but you, you never stop plugging away and trying to, trying to get the best. Now you spent, as you mentioned, you spent a few years with the Jets. What did you take away from that experience? I mean, it was a valuable experience. Um, I tell you, like I said, I went there to be a, a national scout to see more, more of the country. Um, it was a great experience to see how, how another team does it. Um, growing up in, in this system here in Green Bay, um, you kind of kind of locked in and focused on, on how we do things, but it was nice to see another, another way of uh, doing things. Um, met some great people over there. Um, and you just take the contrast with you and, and, and kind of build um, your own knowledge base of how to uh, build a winning franchise. And there's different ways to do it, um, but it was a great, great learning experience. How do you handle when you have an opinion on most of the time, a player? Mm -hmm. And maybe the room consensus doesn't share your opinion. Maybe the boss doesn't. How do you handle that? Well. I think it goes back to what's best for the, for the team and what's best for the Packers. And it doesn't always mean agreeing with everybody in the room. Um, I think it's important uh, to do the work, uh, to come in with your own, your own opinions, because I think if, if everybody agrees all the time, then he doesn't need half of us, you know? Um, and I think we all have different perspectives and um, you have to, you know, kind of stick to your guns and, and, and have at the end of the day that he will trust what, what you're saying and what you believe in. And if we don't agree, that's fine. But as long as we all do the work and, and go through the process, then at the end of the day, um, you know, you can, you can rest easy that you, you've done your, done your job. In prepping for this interview, I went up and talked to Brian Gutekunst, mm -hmm. and I'm asking him about you, and he said, Lee is a real dude. Now, in your guys' line of work, mm -hmm. could you describe what a real dude is? Well, I don't, I don't know if, uh, if, if Brian shares the same definition. Um, I just think a guy that's, uh, that's consistent, um, he knows who he is, he knows who he isn't. And, you know, when you have a, a, a room full of a, a lot of personalities and a lot of different, uh, you know, opinions, um, when Brian can rely on, on what you bring to the table each and every day. Um, and quite frankly, that's as a player also. You know, you, there's a core, core guys that you depend on. Like when things get tough, you know that you can go to them and, and rely on them. And um, that's kind of, you know, how we think of a, a real, real dude in this business. Lee, he also said you're a grinder. How important is success in your field? How important is just rolling up your sleeves and being a worker? Well, I think it, it kind of goes back to my playing days. Um, you know, I wasn't uh, a five-star athlete coming out. You know, wasn't going to be, uh, you know, destined to play in the pros for 10, 12 years. So I knew um, at, at an early age that I had, to, I had to grind and I had to work and never take a day off. Um, you, you play the game. You never know when, you're, when your last day is going to come. So you treat every day as, as your last. And I think you kind of take that work ethic into, into the scouting world. And uh, you never stop, like I said, you never stop trying to get better. Um, we're all competitive, we all want to win. And um, I just think that's a fire that never goes away. Do you have, and I know it's always a collective effort, but do you have a success that you're particularly proud of, that you take a lot of pride in uh, during these years? As, as a player or as a scout? As a scout, as, as a, a scout. professional. I would say, um, you know, you never want to, um, single out one player here, one player there. But if I had to, I would say uh, uh, drafting James Starks uh, the, the year that uh, we, we took him. Um, he was a guy that did not play his entire senior year because of injury. 
And uh, so there wasn't a whole body of work to go on that senior year. But uh, just through my experience and my scouting, um, I felt that he was a player that could help us. At the time, he was a running back. Um, we needed somebody that, that could fill in that role. Um, he was a guy that you kind of fight for in that room, but you don't have a lot of, a lot of tape to go on. So you have to go on your faith and, and, and what you saw in the player and what you saw in his potential. And uh, make a long story short, he helped us you know, win, win the Lombardi that, that year um, in, in his role. But uh, that was one moment that I, that I was proud of that you know, stuck by my guns and, and we drafted him and, uh, and helped us make history. You've been around here for a long time mm -hmm. and you guys have notoriously good locker rooms. I mean, just good guys. Mm -hmm. How have you done that? Well, um, you know, all of our college scouts do, do a, lot, a lot of work at the schools. You know, we're talking to um, different coaches, different assistants, um, trainers, whatever. We're trying to get, get a beat for what the, what the guy is as a player and as, an, as a person. And you just, you know, you're trying to get quality guys in, in the locker room that are unselfish, um, team first oriented. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to get, build, um, build a locker room that supports one another. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's a people business. And, um, and the locker room is the, is the nucleus of that. And um, the better locker room you have, the better, better chance of success you have. When it comes to player evaluation, is there a mystical it or can you learn it? Or is it one of those things where you kind of either got an eye for it or you don't? How do you look at that? I mean, I think there's different, different ways to go about it. Um, you know, for, for me personally, having grown up around the game my entire life, I feel like I, I can spot it um, maybe better than, than some who, who haven't been scouting for, for a long time or haven't played the game, you know, at a high level. Um, I think I, I can't say that, that people can't develop it. Um, I think it might be tougher, but I think, again, it goes back to having played the game. It gives you a, um, kind of a leg up to, to know what it really takes to have success in, in, in this league as a, as a player. Lee, what would you say is the most challenging part of your job? The most challenging part is, um, I would say, accepting losses. You know, um, we're all committed to, to winning. Um, at the end of the day, it, it goes back to the product on the field. And I think, uh, you know, when you give your all and, and you still lose, it's tough. You have to accept it, but um, you never get used to it. Um, you know, we all want to win. Um, they call us title town for a reason. And um, it's a special place. And uh, you definitely want to keep the fans happy and, uh, and our staff happy because we, we put in the work. So you want to win. On the flip side, most satisfying part of your job? The most satisfying part is, uh, I would say, seeing, seeing our young players have success. You know, um, it's not easy to play in this league, even if you're, you're a high draft pick, a low draft pick. Um, I think seeing those young guys develop and have success and, and build confidence, um, not only as players, but as men, um, seeing these guys develop and, and, um, and see their full potential is uh, quite satisfying. I want to throw out a hypothetical. You're named GM of an expansion team. You are starting from square one. Where would you start? How do you build that team? How do you build that team? Well, um, you kind of go back, get, go back to your philosophies. Um, what you want to, what you want to stand for as a team, as an organization. Um, how you want to build confidence in the community. Um, there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, it starts with building a, a great staff around you and, and letting people know that you're all in it for, for one another. Um, you have a common goal uh, that you want to achieve and you, you keep that goal in front of everybody. So there's no questions, there's no gray areas. We know where we want to go and you start with, with that mission. Thank you, Lee. Lee Gissendaner, one of the Packers' unsung heroes.